Ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but certainly not by me. Crystal Daggers, welcome to the channel, and welcome to another guide. In this guide, we're going to be taking a look at Melee at Elite Dungeon 1 to finish off the three combat styles for Elite Dungeon 1, and in the upcoming couple weeks, we'll be taking a look at all three combat styles at Elite Dungeon 2 and 3. Now, I need to make a couple notes before we get into the worn equipment and whatnot, in that this is not a full best-in-slot guide. This is not the fastest Melee solos possible, but just like every other guide I like, this is just a example on how I tackle the problem or tackle the method of using a certain combat style at a certain place. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this guide. Alrighty, so here is the gear and inventory and everything else that I used for this method. As far as melee goes, this is not all of the potential swaps. Uh, I omitted the whip and I omitted a couple of things like flanking and whatnot, uh, just because honestly my brain doesn't like handling all of the different switches melee has has, and these items aren't really going to help as far as getting, you know, five runs an hour. It's not going to help you get to the sixth run per hour. At least as far as my abilities are concerned, I'll get five runs per hour with this preset, or if I used whip and everything else that I could possibly add in. Now, the main things to note are the two EOFs, the one that is on my character and the one equipment that is an easy K EOF, and the one in the inventory, the green EOF, is a D-claw EOF. Now, yes, I also have a physical physical easy K for a cleave swap. This is absolutely not necessary. This is quite a bit extra and you could easily get away with using your scythe or your spear as your cleave swap. Scythe is there mostly for AoE clearing, and it is, I think, the still old best-in-slot perks, uh, what would be, I think it's Aftershock 4, Precise 2, and then Equilibrium 4, Ruthless 3. I think those are the perks it has on it. It's from a bunch of old Slayer tasks long ago, and I've never really updated it with anything new, so it works just fine for clearing out trash mobs anyway. The Spear does have Lunging on it, and the Lang Swords and the Easy K, the physical one, have just standard best-in-slot perks on them. As you can see I am rocking full four-piece vestments with the Cinderbane gloves. Vestments are very nice for adrenaline management and it is probably one of the best armor sets to come into game. And you might think that you might get Shreked here at ED1 because a lot of the mobs can hit pretty high but if you use Vamp Scrim on the trash mobs and the bosses you're careful about timing devotions and di disrupt shields you'll get through this just fine. As far as perks on vestment go uh, the top just kind of has the standard ones of Impatient 4, Devoted 4, and Crackling for Relent 5. The bottoms have Biting 4 Hoarding, that is just to help out with death cost, and when I do inevitably die at a boss, you know, it's just kind of part of the game at this point, where if you're full sending it, trying to get max kills per hour for max GP per hour, eventually you are going to fall over a couple times. We know if you're risking it a bit too hard or you're not paying attention or something, you know, stuff happens in this game. When the death cost rework comes out, I'm not quite sure what I'll put in its place, but uh, I'll just wait till then to make that change. Now the Genocidal Demon Slayer, that is not actually for ED1. That was for doing Carapac as a. I was using this vestment as a hybrid swap, and the Demon Slayer is there just for Zami on release when hybrid was the method. And when we got the demons or the Demon P7 was there, I would just use it to kill him. But honestly, I'm probably gonna get rid of this combo. You could easily put in something just like Enhanced Devoted Four, or if you want to put in uh, like a Dragon Slayer Undead Slayer for the other two elite dungeons, if you want to melee camp all of them, then you know you could easily do something like that but the fourth slot is pretty free uh, most people are probably going to run enhanced devoted just to help out with the damage reduction being that vestments is only tier 70 defense armor but like tier 105 damage or something like that so just try out a couple different combos and find out what works best for you as far as relics are concerned i'm using my bog standard uh kind of relic setup i don't really change from this all too much i'm using death ward conservation of energy and fury of the small as of the making of this video there is still no solid word or updates on potential Luck of the Dwarves relic rework, so I'll just be using my standard Luck of the Dwarves for killing the trash mobs and swap over to the Reaver's Ring or the bosses per usual. As far as the rest of the inventory is concerned, I did go pretty low on food because honestly you don't really need it. Siru is pretty much no foodable uh, once you get through the head and you kind of learn how to deal with that mechanics of like the different arms, where to plant all the uh, little tendrils that can pop up if he slams his hand down. Uh, once you get past that part of the phase, which is usually pretty quick, then on the crystals you can easily just soul split back to full as HP does not matter at that point. 
And for bosses like Masuda, if you time your devotion right and then just swap to Vamscrim for the Thrashing Waters phase, it is a pretty simple fight as well, and you'll see how that works in the example kill later on in this video. Bring a Grimoire swap just for all of those sweet, sweet crits and all of those maximum hits, especially in combo with uh, Lang spec. Seeing those 19 fives pop up from Overpower is always a nice treat. Other than that, uh, the Enhanced Passage gloves are there. They do have the upgrade on them, and it is kind of nice for the second crystal at Siru because I just toss the gloves on anyway during the first crystal and then during EZK you can get some nice big havoc damage on there and it's pretty nice. The helm is also just to help build adrenaline on second crystal. If you're used to using the helm as a swap for your zerk rotations and your EZKs, uh, feel free to use that. Uh, I'm just using some very basic rotations in here. This is nothing, you know, crazy or best in slot meta. I did change my zerk rotation for vestments to try and include uh, two hurricanes and two destroys with the second destroy being a two hit. But other than that, I'm not doing any of the crazy zerk rotations that involve uh, easy K in it or a chaos or slaughter in it. I'm not doing any of those. The two rune pouches there just have runes for disrupt shield and vengeance. I'm just on the lunar spell book. There is nothing real fancy there. And the mines are kind of the king of the show when it comes to ED1. This is the dungeon where they are the most useful, being that you can use two sets of mines on the crystals to make one cycle much easier for yourself. And fun fact with melee specifically, the Lang spec does affect the max hit of the mines. You will actually see the mines hit 13ks in this video rather than the standard 10k that you're used to seeing. Other than that, I just use a defender as a shield swap to make life easy. And I have three spirituals there because I am on Ripper Demon. I'm sure there are some rotations out there that take advantage of Meteor Strike and maybe in those situations a Kalg would be more useful or there's some other people who might want to swap over to a Hellhound to help with damage reduction. However, in the example kill, I'll show you exactly what I do and with a little bit of practice, you should be able to blitz through this dungeon with melee, no problem. And the one benefit about melee here is I honestly think it is the most consistent speed method here. Now, what I mean by that is yes, magic can go faster. Yes, range can go faster. However, melee feels the most consistent on the dungeon for me and it is the easiest combat style for me to maintain a constant anywhere from about five runs an hour is what I average. The only thing that really will slow my runs down is if I just generally screw up the rotation for one cycle, but other than that it feels very consistent throughout the dungeon and honestly it's probably the most enjoyable combat style here. And also last but not least, can't forget the lucky charms over there, you always got to get the onyx dust or anything else from them, you know, every little bit of GP does help in the end so you might as well just bring them since the inventory space isn't you know super cramped anyways though if you have any questions about the gear that i'm using or any comments you want to leave down below feel free to leave them down below and let me know what you think but let's go ahead and go into that example kill all righty here we are for the example kill now before we start off i just want to talk about aura choice real quick um typically i just use majorat aura because it's the uh, simplest to use and you can just use tier 3 refreshes on it. Uh, you don't really need the extra damage from Zerk Aura, although Zerk Aura will make Sanctum a little bit faster, but uh, it's just a personal call that you can make. Um, if you want to do more damage and just send it, use Zerk Aura, but I find it slightly painful for ED1, so I just go with Majorat Aura and call it a day. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into this example kill. So we'll charge up our adrenaline. Oh, we need 120, because vestments. I always forget that. Get our prayers on. Turn on our vamp scrim. Start in normal mode. Equip my mobile swap. And we're off to the races. I like to surge down this hallway. I like to click on this little line here. So it can set me up for a surge bladed dive. There it is. And then here, I'll usually use quake. Maybe hurricane this guy. And then Flurry here. I didn't want to walk over here. I just wanted to hit this guy. But it is what it is. And then just basic the last guy down. What I like to do here is Surge Bladed. Or Bladed I've Surge. Same tick. Surge again. Wait a couple ticks and barge this guy. Equip the Scythe. Go ahead and use a single basic on this guy. Wait for them to all cluster up. And go ahead and use a Meteor Strike. And then target the far one. And then do Quake. Hurricane. And they're all dead. What I'll do here is just anticipate, get the aggro of all these guys, walk them back, and then use a flurry, because flurry will hit all of them. And here, I'll just go in between, if I can click, 
And just hurt. Oh, hurricane's off cooldown. I'll just basic these guys then. Usually hurricane's off cooldown there, but I went a little bit fast on the other ones. Here, I just like to anticipate. Barge this guy, run through, and bleed flurry. Swap to my scythe, hit bike, hurricane, and then cleave this guy over here. Maybe toss another basic. This guy. This one, I just like to overpower for simplicity's sake. And then just finish up on this guy. I like to keep relatively high adren, so I'll probably just use basics on this guy. And here, I like to surge bleed a dive over to this tile. And then I walk behind this one to get them all to line up. And then I just flurry. You could also go the other way, but... I like doing this one for melee just because it's kind of fun. You can either use the lure from the other two videos for that one, or this one doesn't really matter. Here, bladed dive surge. Ah, I kind of messed it up. Bladed dive surge, bladed dive again. Ah, disrupt, or I mean not disrupt, uh, devotion. And then here, I'll just go ahead and use a uh, flurry. I got stunned, so I'll just start basicing these guys. Sometimes I'll meteor these guys for my Zerk, other times I won't. And here what I do is I run in a bit, Surge Bladed Tile to Surge Bladed Dive to this line here, so that way all the R hats will get stuck behind this pillar. Swap over to my Grim, my ring, turn it on. I like to get a little bit close. And then just a Zerk with an A pod is all it is. I've got the target cycle. Hurricane, bleed destroy, and I'll just go for an assault. Go for an overpower. Couple basics into a flurry. Go ahead and res this one. And then another hurricane. Into destroy. Since I zerked a little bit late, I didn't get the zerk hits on those. And I'll just build here adrenaline here for a second. And here I'll go ahead and chaos roar. Easy K with the EOF. Got to swap gloves there, but you can use smash. Use my bleeds. I'll disrupt shield this hit. Go for another overpower. Throw my gloves this time for havoc. And go for another assault. And we'll just kind of thresh and finish this off. Pray flick accordingly. And we're off. Swap back to Luck of the Doors in my Scrimshaw, turn on the Scrimshaw, put on the mobile swap while I'm going down these stairs. Bladed Dive Surge, Surge again down this hallway, and I like to flurry this guy, if I have Adrenaline. Now you can also target this one on same tick and you'll stand in this corner, or on the same tile if you want. Flurry will work that way as well. Uh, sometimes you get the Honto that will want to try and come up and try something, but uh, usually if that happens just turn on Protect Melee, you should kill him pretty quickly. I actually like to Meteor Strike these guys. I haven't done it before, but now I like to. Just to get some Crit Adren back. It usually kills them pretty quickly. And here, I'll drink my Excel Pot again. Surge Bladed Dive, per usual. It's just three sets of Surge Bladed Dive. And then this one, I like to just overpower it at insta-kill, but I used a, a basic ability on accident. Put my Mobile Swamp back on. Bladed dive to this tile once I reach this part of the stairs, and then here I'll just flurry these guys. Alright, put the mobile swap back on, go up the right side of the stairs. Bladed dive, or surge bladed dive to the center here, and then here you can just use your scythe to quake, hurricane, and target the other one on the far corner. And then I like to flurry this guy. And then maybe get a cleave off on him. Finish him off, and we're good to go. As long as you stand in the center, you can kind of just play your AoEs by ear. Here, I actually like to barge, bleed flurry, and then overpower this guy. Go back down. And we'll go ahead and flurry this guy, these two. I like to kill these two here on this staircase just to make it simpler, so I'm not trying to like find them in the mix later on. Put on melee prayer. 
sure they're dead. Surge, bladed dive to this tile. Kind of messed it up, but it doesn't matter too much. I really like having Meteor Strike for these guys, because I like to kill them as fast as possible. Meteor Strike does a lot of damage. Go ahead and wreck the Overload. If you get the Honto next to you, what you can do is run over to this tile here. But we're getting kind of unlucky. Should just be this one to kill. You can just play it by ear. Oh, there's still one more. I think it's this one. Sometimes I get lost and just stuff happens. Yeah, there we go. Usually you don't have to run around like that. Usually the Hantos will play nice. That was kind of them being really mean, so it is what it is. If you wanted to, you really, if you really wanted to, you could bring sticky bombs and kind of freeze them in place. That's a little bit extra for me, but you know, it is a strat that could work should you want to try it. Here, I just like to flurry and then basic this guy down. Not search, bank. Reload the preset. Come on, let me reload the preset. There we go. And here, equip the two things. Turn on the Grim, Zerk, Bleed to Dive Surge, and then TC with a barge. That's what I like to do there. And it gets keeps them all stuck behind the uh, the little barrier. They won't come into the room that way. Here, I'm just waiting for a spin. I'm going to wait a couple attacks and then Devotion. Just in time for an Overpower into a Destroy. And here, I'm just going to go into an Early Chaos Roar for an easy K. Do a nice little Bleed. Walk under for a Slaughter. Didn't get it because of the spec, but you know, it is what it is. And he should be phased. And here I actually like to put my Scrimshaw back on just for the HP. And what you can do is just Bladed Dive onto these and every time you kill it the Bladed Dive refreshes, so... There is that. Now, some more advanced techniques you could do for this dungeon if you want some extra AoEs is to bring Laceration Boots as a swap, and then you have Bladed Dives in AoE. So, that does work. If you so choose. I'm kind of lazy, so I don't bother. And just per usual on Masuda, what I like to do is wait about a minute and ten seconds around there, and then I'll start doing some type of build, whether it be like with Meteor Strike or uh, getting my Devotion all built up. And so, I'm looking right around for that minute 50, probably the two minute mark. That felt a little bit slow of P1, so I'm probably going to go at the two minute mark. And you can A-pot this phase, it doesn't matter. Because you need a, you're going to use A-pot on the crisp, first crystal, not the head itself. Now we're getting close to that two minute mark, so I'll go ahead and pop Devotion. Start building up again. Put my helm back on so I can actually get the right amount of Adren. And I'm just going to go ahead and Meteor now on this one. Because I want that extension. Turn my Grim back on. Really unlucky with the placement there. Get my Lang spec built up because I can. Res that hit, Zerk, and we're off to the races. Have a pot. Hurricane. Bleed destroy into an assault. I disrupt shield here for the magic hit. Didn't need it. And just finish it off with another hurricane and a destroy. Now don't try, don't limit listen for a faster kill here, it's just better to go ahead and build up Adren here because you want your Devotion back later and the high Adrenaline to start off the fight. Immediately swap over to Magic Prayer, I'll just go back to Vamp Scrim just because I can. And Luck of the Dwarves because you never know. And then here I like to push off my Devotion as long as possible, it's about as long as I want to wait. I'll just barge this guy and toss a Blood Flurry on, just so I get that extension. Kill this guy pretty quickly so I get the other extension. That gives us about 10 seconds to kill this guy and get out of here, and we're good to go. 
Go back to my ring and my Grim. And now what I like to do for Siru here is go ahead and hit my Excel Pot. Zerk. Surge Bladed Dive with a TC into a Barge. Double Basic. I'm going to go ahead and Bleed Flurry just so Zerk is off cooldown faster. That's kind of the name of the game is getting Zerk off cooldown again with uh, Siru. And just toss a couple thresholds here and there. Go for an overpower, because I can. It's a little bit of a waste, but you know, it is what it is. I'm going to run over to this tile, just to avoid this one. I'm going to go ahead and use another flurry, just to try and get Zerk back off cooldown faster. Here, I'm going to run across. And run, run down here. You can actually stand on this tile, you'll be perfectly fine. And I'm going to go ahead and Lang spec now. And just use basics to kill him. BD over to the tile and go up. Here I'm going to prep a Vuln Bomb for the crystal and immediately start spamming Zerk. Throw the Vuln Bomb, barge, place your mines with the basic. Another basic. Bleed Assault. Overpower. Hurricane. And destroy. Sometimes you can get away with just a basic, but that one need to destroy. Get a full flurry off. Basic. Another basic. Third basic. I'm going to go ahead and Chaos War. Easy K. Bleed. Second bleed. Forgot to put on my Havoc gloves, but it's not too big of a deal. And just build Adrenaline from here. Gonna go ahead and toss another flurry, and we're just gonna build up adrenaline. Toss a preemptive vault mom down. Did not get my lungs back off. That's not good. That's fine. So we're gonna wait for the first two Ubers here. One, two, Zerk. Barge double basic. Basic one. Basic two. Leave the assault, place the mines. Go for another basic, overpower, limitless into hurricane, and usually that kills it. There you go. So I'll go ahead and recap here the one cycle rotation as kind of an overview. Zerk with nothing on the head uh, at about 7.22 to 7.24, anywhere in that range. Um, actually, more like 7.23. Because uh, at 7.2 flat, that's when you go up for the crystals. That's when you basically are knocking him out, and then you can go up to the crystals and kill him while he's or kill the crystals to free him while he's knocked out. And once you do, you have your length spec ready, you're full of dren, you blade a dive over, you jump up, you can press Vuln Bomb and then right click on the crystal. And then as soon as you notice yourself up here when the screen transition happens, then you can just immediately click. Sometimes I like to wait a second, like just a one game tick before, uh, because if you get a little bit too overzealous on the Vuln Bomb throw, you can mess up your barge by coming up and stabbing an auto attack just as you hit barge, and it'll wipe it and get really annoying. So just wait an extra game tick once you're up here to throw the Vuln Bomb as you're zerking, and then barge, uh, double basic with your mind press, and then just bleed assault. Uh, overpowered, overpower hurricane, and if you need it, destroy, but if not, then go ahead and just use basics, and then full flurry on this pillar, and then maybe another two-hit flurry with a easy K, a roared easy K with just two bleeds, it's all you need, and the helm here is actually pretty nice for building yourself up to 100%, and then the third crystal is just preparation, so the easiest prep you can do is just make sure you're already at 120% Adren, and then just Lang spec as soon as you can. Sometimes it is nice to Lang spec a little bit earlier because you only really need it for this crystal here. So you can kind of Lang spec a little bit earlier if you want to then be able to Lang spec earlier on the third crystal. That's something that just a little bit of experience of doing this while and playing around with it, you'll get the hang of it and before you know it, you'll be doing it. Anyways, you'll see the two Ubers heal, and after the second Uber, you'll wait two ticks, and on that second game tick, you'll press a Zerk, and then Barge, Double Basic, Bleed Assault, Overpower, and then Limitless into Hurricane, and it usually dies from that, but if it doesn't, then you can easily use Destroy, and then at the end of your Destroy, you can toss in another Basic if need be, but this rotation, if you follow it, I have not 
seen a one cycle miss because of damage. I've only had one cycles miss because I've screwed up the rotation in some way. So honestly, melee is probably one of, the, it's definitely the most consistent as a single style camp. Now, most consistent for me, I should say, because, you know, I'm not the best ranger. I'm not the best major. Um, those are kind of hit or miss for me to get one cycles. But with melee, it is very simple and with honestly not too much cost in gear comparative wise to the other styles you can get some lightning fast runs here at this dungeon ladies gentlemen and i did not forget about you crystal daggers thank you very much for watching your viewership is greatly appreciated as always have a wonderful morning evening afternoon nighttime, time whatever it is wherever you are and i'll see you next time for the next video peace